To those of you who don't know, John Venables is currently serving time in prison because he, along with his friend, murdered a two-year-old boy in 1993. Venables committed this heinous crime when he was only 10 years old. This crime shook the UK and the world. But the worst part about this is John Venables is not the only documented case for children with a history of murder. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you get notified when a new video is available on our channel. Today, we will be showing you top 5 kids as dangerous as John Venables. Number 5. Mary Bell At number 5, we start off our list with Mary Bell. She was 10 to 11 years old when she strangled two young boys to death in Scottswood. On the day before her 11th birthday, May 25th, 1968, Mary Bell strangled a young boy named Martin Brown in a derelict house. He was four years old. Two months later, with the help of a friend, Mary Bell strangled another young boy by the name of Brian Howe, who was three years old. Eerily similar, right? This took place over 25 years before John Venables took the limelight on national media attention. Mary Bell had her own mark as she mutilated his genitals and carved a large M on the boy's abdomen. She was convicted of manslaughter in December of that year on the grounds of diminished responsibility. Court-appointed psychiatrists said she displayed classic symptoms of psychopathy. The press ate this story up like a Thanksgiving dinner with Bell's mom even selling stories to the press as well as writings written by Mary Bell herself. In 1980, she was released from prison after serving her 12-year sentence. She was granted anonymity upon release, allowing her a new life. She had a daughter four years later. Her current whereabouts are unknown. Number 4. Christopher Pittman Next, at number 4, we have Christopher Pittman. Christopher Pittman was another underage murderer having killed an elderly couple when he was 12 years old. The catch this time is he murdered Joe and Joy Pittman, his grandparents. Pittman had a troubled childhood growing up, running away from home and threatening suicide. His problems stemmed from his mother abandoning him when he was just a young boy and a father who was abusive. His grandparents came to be the only family he really had along with his sister. Doctors decided to prescribe him with medication included samples of Zoloft to which Pittman exhibited side effects. On November 28, 2001, Pittman would get into an argument fighting with the boy on the school bus. Pittman's grandfather decided to discipline him with the paddle spanking. Later that night, he went into his grandparents' bedroom and killed both of them with a shotgun, a shotgun that he was taught to use by his grandfather. He stole $33 and tried to leave before getting stuck two counties away, and he then confessed to the crime. He said that they deserved it. He was tried four years later as an adult and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Number three, George Steiny. At number three, we have George Steiny. He was a 14-year-old African-American who was convicted of killing two young girls, Betty June Binnaker and Mary Emma Thames, aged 11 and seven respectively. On March 23, 1944, Binnaker and Thames were both found dead in Alkulu, South Carolina after having gone missing the day before. During this time, Alkulu was segregated between black and white, resulting in very limited interaction between them. The bodies were found on the black side of Alkulu. Steiny and his older brother were arrested on suspicion. George's brother was released while he was held. After being beaten and bribed with food, Steiny was forced into confessing to the two girls' murders. He was convicted and sentenced to death by electric chair, at the age of 14, the youngest age for a person to receive the death penalty. But on December 7, 2014, after reopening the case, the conviction was overturned as the court ruled that Steiny's case was an unfair trial. Number 2. Anissa Weir At number 2, we have Anissa Weir. She had two best friends in Morgan Geyser and Peyton Lutner. On May 31, 2014, Weir and Geyser lured Lutner into the woods and stabbed her 19 times. They were emulating a fictional horror urban legend, The Slender Man. They acted as proxies for the legend and subsequently murdered Lutner because of it. All the girls were 12 years old at the time of the event. The girls read about the legend on the Creepypasta wiki and they believed The Slender Man to be real and wanting to act as his proxies and prove their loyalty to him, they planned to murder their best friend. 
While they were playing hide and seek in the woods, they pinned Lutner down and stabbed her 19 times. They then dragged her body to the nearby road where a cyclist found Lutner. She survived the attack. Weir and Geyser were apprehended in a store near the interstate and the murder weapon was found in their bag. They both pled guilty three years later in attempted homicide. Weir was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. Number one, Lionel Tate. At number one, we have Lionel Tate. In 1999, he was left alone with the six-year-old girl, Tiffany Eunuch. Eunuch was being babysat by Tate's mother. Tate claimed that he and Eunuch were playing wrestling when Tate had Eunuch in a headlock and she hit her head on the table. Tate then called her mother to say that Eunuch wasn't breathing. Tate was convicted of first-degree murder due to Eunuch's body having bruises all over as well as a lacerated liver, a result of Tate stomping her on the ground. The felony murder rule took effect as even if Tate did not intend to kill Eunuch, he knowingly abused another child who ended up dying. Two years later, he was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole, making him the youngest person ever to be given a life sentence. Bonus, who is actually John Venables? For the bonus section of our video, we present to you John Venables himself. He and his friend Robert Thompson were just 10 years old when they abducted James Bulger from a mall in Boodle, Merseyside in 1993. They tortured and murdered Bulger and left his body by a railway line. Venables and Thompson were found guilty of Bulger's abduction and murder. At 11 years old, they became the youngest people to be jailed for murder. Venables would be released from a young offender's institution at 18 years old and was handed a new identity to start a new life. He had to change identities twice as he told his friends he was a convicted murderer. He remains in anonymity due to his dark past and he roams the world today seeking to live out the rest of his days in peace. Which part shocked you the most? Know of any other disturbing child cases? Drop a comment below letting us know what you think and how you feel. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell so you get notified when we upload a fresh new video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to catch the next two videos on our channel for it will be even better. Thank you for watching Top 5 Breathtaking and we'll see you all in a short while.